America. He's imported from America in 2014, now owned and driven by Ivan Foley. That magnificent machine, that one. Also out there, the 63 Toyota Compact I was telling you about. Shane Jen, that's it going past us there now. Listen and enjoy, folks. That's a little bit of history on the, uh, the cars on track there at the moment. One or two of them uh, yet to come out. I don't see the uh, Garden Water Craft Corey Stoddard driven machine. Saw him out there with an engine start. And also Peter McCauley's Alpha 1800 fuel injected machine. Xbox Turnbull car, not out there yet, but hopefully by the end of the night. they got four demonstration runs tonight, so hopefully uh, those couple of cars will make it their way out in due course before the end of the night. Ivan Foley's Pride and joy just departing the main straight. Okay, white flag, yep. Coming to the end of, uh, of demonstration run number one for the vintage midgets here tonight. Eighty-two Gamble, the ex Bobby Backlaw car, owned and driven by Lee Drennan. That's out there as well. That's the car, the '78 car, going around the outside down the bottom there. Bobby Blackwell drove that in Sydney to distinction. And. Uh, the 83 Gamble that you see going up the back straight there, the, uh, the Australia number one car, the 83 Gamble. Russell Hines owns that. That's an ex-Gary Rush car, 10-time national champion. Michelle doing the 50-50 raffle. She's going around amongst you now. Michelle doing the 50-50 raffle. Watch out for Michelle. The ticket, that's all it will cost you. Give me a bit of a rundown of all the cars so far tonight. First demonstration runs by these cars. And they always bring them out to these events and we do appreciate it. You see the difference of the sprint cars from yesteryear to the ones today. Quite a few similarities but a lot of changes. Different sounding machines, aren't they? A lot heavier. By and large, as a rule, these cars are a lot, lot heavier than the sprint cars of today. So there we have it, the first demonstration run. Tony Eichenloft is driving it tonight. Edmund Coyle over copy. Ronnie Schumann. From the USA, drove that car to a victory in the uh, Winter Nationals in Sydney. Ivan Foley, that brilliant yellow and orange USA one car, the Edmunds Midget. Just down below us there now on the main straight, look at that immaculate car, built in 1969, formerly housed the Sesco motor in that, driven by Lee Earnshaw in America. Came over here in 2014. It's these days owned and driven by Ivan Foley. 
It's got a, an Esslinger Ford Pinto motor, three-speed gearbox, clutch and starter motor run on, runs on petrol. That's how you see it today. The 53 car out there is a, a little compact. Yamaha YZF1000 motor in that. John Bennett's driving it. Engine work done by Graham Gerhardt. Try and go through them all for you. One lap to go for these guys. Not all out there. Some of them came out earlier. But it gives you a little bit of a, a story about them. Ah, uh, folks, the second demonstration run for these guys. There's the 43. Next Mel Kenyon car, the uh, Exxon Saddle 7 car, as we said. The uh, the 96 down here that you see, of course, the triple wing car. Full of the USA three spin car driven by Jimmy Sears. Purchased from Larry Burton in 1975. Raced by Gary Wright, 75 to early uh, 1980s, mostly in South East Queensland. Played second in the New South Wales title of Lismore in 76, second in the Queensland title of Mirabeau in 76, and second in the Iron Holden Classic at Cairns in 1978 and 79. The Bars League car that you see down there, I ended up to identify them by the signage. 78 car, ex Bobby Blackwell, owned and driven by Lee Dream. Parramatta car that one, and also out there, Russell Hines' yellow Australia runner, former Gary Rush car, owned and driven by Gary to some of these Australian title victories. That's him just heading down there through turns one and two at the moment. The 84 Australian title at Rockhampton went to the credit of Gary Rush in that car. One of his 10 victories just down below us there now. And of course our flag bearer tonight. The USA one car owned and driven by Gary and Stephen White. The replica of the Gambler USA one car driven by Steve Kinson of the 84-85 Tour of Australia. Gambler's print car, fuel injected V8, quick change rear end. The Edmunds Autocraft X Mill Kenyon 43 car. Never raced in Australia. Plenty of USAC experience though, of course. Well, we've got a flat right rear on the 7 car. Luckily, nobody hit it coming around. The little uh, compact there, the MRY. ZF 1000. The other compact with the wing on it. Toyota 1600. And uh, as you can also see out there, the USA one, as I said before, of Ivan Foley. So their pride and joy is on the line. Some great sounds coming out of these midgets. That poorly machine sounding absolutely crisp indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, they come out with one more lap to go in this particular journey. I, as I said before, I do want you to put your hands together for them. Put on a great performance tonight. Used to hold the three lap and eight lap record at the Echo. Shaved 27 seconds off the 20 lap record at Echo in 1976. 
And if you see any of the old footage and photos from Echinage, you'll probably see this car. Easily identifiable. As I said earlier on, the play second in the New South Wales state title in Lismore in 1976. Play second in the Queensland state title in Maribor in 1976. And second in the Ireland Classic. Ireland Holden Classic at Cairns in 1978 and 79. So plenty of history with these cars, and it's great to think that they're still out, still running. We've got a gentleman out here who might have our lucky program number by Wixford. Yeah, folks with a white flag coming out very shortly. We'll run down on all the cars there. The ex-Jimmy Sills car just up the road from it, the ex-Gary uh, Rush car. Seventy-six, of course. The eighty-two Gambler Sprint Car, the low bar USA Gambler Sprint Car, three fifty Chevy. I'd love to have a a couple of slow laps in there. Any one of these, actually. But valuable machinery, no doubt, uh, to uh, If you ever came to price these vehicles, you'd have to have two prices. One real market value and the other one nostalgia value. And I guess I know which would be the greatest. You get to the stage where these guys wouldn't part with these machines for anything. OK, that's the end of that one. That's the last night tonight. We are going to have them again during the season. So we look forward to uh, them uh, coming back during the year, of course. Just a little bit of a problem. Well, Russell Hines' car down here, the HM Headers car. But there we go, folks.